Oh, modern marriage. Modern marriage. Trash. In my opinion. Somewhere along the way, through history, marriage began, like I said earlier, it, we had a shift. It was long, it was slow, but it started. And to save time, instead of going through all of the historical shift, because it's, it was a very slow process, we're just going to jump to right now. So modern marriage is now a contract signed between the couple and the state in which they resided. We now live in a time where a little more than half of all, depending on the statistic you use, but it's, it's anywhere from 30% from some Christian statistic fields. They'll say that Christians have a lower divorce rate, but some other really good uh, like Pew Research disagrees with that. Regardless, we'll call it between 30 and 65%. Of divorces, or I'm sorry, of legal marriages end in divorce. The standard statistic you're gonna hear pretty much anywhere else is about 50%. Still, garbage odds. That's a real bad ratio. We live also in a time with modern marriage where more children are growing up in a single parent household than ever in history, which has proven statistically to be one of the literal worst things that has ever happened in societies. Children growing up in single parent households is one of the most damaging things that has ever happened in human history, where more people get married for emotional reasons, like we were talking about earlier, love being that emotional reason, rather than anything having anything to do with practicality, uh, logic, or intentional reasons really of any kind, such as raising good children or building a strong family to help maintain society. That was a big part of what families were for a long time. Families were built and developed to maintain and progress society so that we could progress. That was a big thing. That's not what it's about anymore. Now it's entirely self-serving. It's entirely selfish. So is it really a wonder at all why the divorce rate has increasingly gotten worse? No, it seems pretty obvious to me personally. Consider also no-fault divorce brought in by Reagan in the rough you know, 1970s, I think. Couples are no longer incentivized to stay together. In fact, modern marriage incentivizes divorce. Arguably, incentivizes women more towards divorce than men, but it still dramatically incentivizes men to also get divorced. However, it's still statistically, again, is less because a lot of the time if a woman leaves for X, Y, and Z reasons, she takes his money and still we live in a time where primarily in most cases, definitely not all, and that's it's shifting massively, but still in most cases, most standard cases, the man is making more money than the woman if she's making money at all. So when she leaves, she takes money. But uh, there's this whole thing, right? So, and it's not, I'm not blaming women or blaming men. I'm saying women are highly incentivized to divorce. It's just a thing. It's a thing that is happening. Women will openly talk about it depending on what sect of society you listen to information from. It's a thing. It's sad. But it's a thing. But still, men are very incentivized as well. There's no reason to stay married really anymore. There's really just not. In the event of a divorce, many times one party will also leave the marriage substantially better off. Again, the, the money thing primarily. Better off from either that financial aspect. But oftentimes it obviously goes to the children as well. So one of the parents... Most of the time, this is not half, this is not 30%, this is more than 75% of the time, one parent sees the kid twice a week. That's horrible for society, it's horrible for the child on an individual basis, and it's horrible for the parents. There's actually a very high suicide rate for the parent in a divorce who does not receive adequate child custody. So adapt, adapt, again, primarily, things are changing, but primarily, I hope nobody wants to argue about this, but primarily women gain greater custody over children than men. Therefore, the statistic shows that there is a, there's a shocking number of men who commit suicide because they don't have involvement in their child's life. Now, I'm not discounting the men who are shit and don't, sorry, but are crap and don't deserve a place in their child's life. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about dads who do. Who, who were good dads, desired to be good dads, and because the mother wanted to be vindictive or whatever, decided to take the child away and not do 50-50 custody. Again, I'm not blaming women. I understand all of this is very nuanced, and I understand men suck. Fully aware of that. Fully on your side with that. However, this is just the way they lean in the modern landscape. 
Till death do us part means nothing in the modern marriage landscape. It means absolutely nothing. Two becoming one flesh, even within a Christian sphere, in my personal opinion, means nothing. It's not, it's not held anymore. We don't hold that to anything anymore. It's, it's till you annoy the hell out of me, till it's not convenient, till I don't feel shit anymore. Sorry, I'm getting aggravated now, so now I'm swearing. It's those. It's not till death do us part. In sickness and in health, until you die, girl, till you die, like it or not, you are here, you will deal with me, I will deal with you, and we will get through this. Two becoming one flesh, that shouldn't be taken lightly, and I feel like it's just, it's like a cute thing that said, it's up on the little canvas on the wall, it's in the church, he, the pastor says it when he marries you, sure, but what does that mean? I, physically. Can you become one flesh with something and then become one flesh with something else? No. No, you can't. So once you become one flesh, it is what? Till death do us part. So if you lose one, you lose the other. And if you lose one, you lose both. And if anything, it could be argued that going through with a governmental marriage, people are opening themselves up to the downside risk, which is all of the above. More downside risk specifically than upside benefit. And that's the problem. And if I don't know what you guys listen to or what spheres you're in or whatever. I, I listen. So anybody who knows me knows I don't really watch TV sometimes with cat in bed for like 30, 30 minutes, an hour tops while I'm falling asleep. I'll, we'll watch a show or something. Otherwise, I never watch TV ever, ever, ever. I listen to educational stuff. I listen to motivational stuff. Like I like to consume information and knowledge and stuff like that's what feeds me. However, there is a podcast that I can't not listen to because I'm so out of touch with the world because I'm so focused and like hyper focused and zoned into my own life. I wake up very early in the morning and then I work literally all day long. So I just I'm very out of touch. I have no idea what kids are doing. I have no idea what college. I have no clue about anything at all. Plus, I spent five years in a special college away from all of society. So my life has been very isolated. So I listened to the Whatever podcast. And if any of you guys know what that is, and I'm not like a casual listener. Like, I watch most of them. I don't watch. I listen to most of them. They're like three to four hours long. And it's a dating podcast, primarily with between 20 and 30-year-old people. And they talk about marriage and sex and divorce and and all this stuff, right? And it just, it absolutely blows me away. But when you hear these conversations and you hear these women talk about how they will just use a guy for money. And then you'll also hear though, these guys talk about how they have no desire to get married. So with, with like the movement and the shift in the dating landscape today, it's a huge risk for men to get married and women don't want to get married. Young, I should say girls. Girls don't want to get married. So what was already a, a, an absolute garbage institution, now nobody really wants to be a part of it at all. So is, is there any way to reconcile that with something that would make more sense? Because marriage has become something that doesn't really make sense. Consider also that this is probably planned. Right. I feel, I feel like we have a decent amount of conspiracy people in this group. Does the government benefit from marriage? Yes or no. Does the government benefit from divorce? Yes or no. Does the, the government benefit from broken families and confused children? Yes or no. From children being raised in a single parent household, does the government benefit from that? Yes or no. And does the government benefit from young boys not having strong, present, engaged fathers in their home and young girls, but young kids? Does the does the well, we'll keep it in the U.S. because most of us, if not all of us, are in the U.S. Does the United States government benefit from the foundational family being broken? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Whether it's monetary, what they get financially by breaking the home, or whether it's control. Either way, they win. Either way. 
They win if you get married. They win again when you get divorced. In a, in a myriad of ways, they win. So we, we've created this culture now. And let's, let's go back to Christianity, okay? All, all y'all are Christians. So from a Christian perspective, should we give a fuh about governmental marriage? And I don't care if you do. I'm not hating on it. I'm saying, and you're free to. Like I said, I, th- there will be a marriage in my personal life. We will get married. It's something that I want to do. However, it irks the hell out of me that the government signs the paper. And it's, it's, it messes with my head a lot. I don't believe in it. I don't believe in legal marriage today, the way it is today. I believe in marriage 100%. 100%. But I don't believe in what it is today. And I think we're on, I think in the 90s, we started a really, a more shallow, slippery slope with marriage. And I feel like the mid 2000s, the slope just dropped. And now it's a free fall. Marriage has become an absolute free fall. We're incentivized to break the contract. Why would people sign a contract that the other person is incentivized to break? It doesn't make any damn sense. For either party, for either party. It's not just one person getting screwed. And more and more people, luckily, are waking up and being like, "Uh, I don't really need the government to be a part of that. What do they do? I get the tax break, sure. Is that worth it? What if you do get divorced? Will the tax break financially account for an adequate amount of money that will offset the cost of divorce? No. In most cases, no. It won't. The tax break won't mean crap if you get divorced. That's a financial travesty for a lot of families. It's an emotional travesty for children. Why put them through that? You can make agreements with someone personally, and then you can make the covenant and promise, which is what the Bible actually talks about, between you two and God. If you also choose to get legally married, cool. I fully support that. However, at no fault of you, but at total fault of the United States government, it's become super risky to do that with Almost no actual benefit other than social pressure in or out of Christianity and a tax break. But the risks are high. The risks are so high that people are reconsidering. Marriage rates have never been as low as they are right now in human history. Since marriage has been a thing, we have never had so many people not doing it. We've never had so many people getting divorced and we've also had never so many people just choosing not to do it. They don't want anything to do it. So can, can are we able to draw any conclusion? Actually, are we able to draw any conclusive rules about modern marriage today from the historical biblical system of marriage or are they just too different? Are, are is it possible for them to be reconciled so that us as Christians can say, okay, The Bible says this about marriage. I can correlate biblical marriage with modern marriage, and therefore I'm okay with following the rules that the Bible says that have to do with marriage, such as, is sex before marriage a sin? Can you reconcile them? Because that's the question of this whole damn talk, right? The Bible says don't do that. Cool, don't do what? Don't have sex before you're married. Cool, what's marriage? Biblical marriage is A, modern day marriage is Z, what do we do? You're functioning off of something that doesn't relate to what the word means now. I don't think you can. I don't think it's possible to reconcile in any way. I think marriage today is too different. It's too different. So here are, here are my hot take thoughts and then I'll open it up to anybody who wants to come on. I do have to go in like 20 minutes. 20 minutes. So if you want to speak, if you want to talk, speak up, then uh, come to Discord. Go down to the red dot section right here. It says event voice. Enter that channel. Mute your mic. And then let me know 
in the YouTube chat and then we'll get you in. But here, here's, here's my opinion. And hate me or love me, I don't really care. I, I do not believe in any way you need to get legally married. I think it's 100% unnecessary. I think especially, again, at no fault of us, at no fault of people, men or women, but at absolute fault of the United States government. And honestly, I blame Reagan a hell of a lot. No fault divorce ruined everything. No incentives to stay together anymore. Divorce as you will for whatever fucking reason you want. Also, no reason. You don't need any reason. Just get divorced. It ruined the institution of marriage. But beside the point, I don't think anybody needs to get legally married to be recognized as married before God. I think if two people get together, they line up promises to each other that align, sure, with what you say during a wedding ceremony, right? Because all that, all that stuff sounds good. All that stuff is what we're hoping for. It's where our heart is. It's, it's where our mind is. It's what we want. The problem is the signing of the document. I'm cool with everything else. I'm cool with the document too. But I think everything else is something you should do. Not a big ceremony. I'm not, I'm not big for the whole ceremony thing. That's a huge waste of money. But that's a personal opinion. Whatever. Whatever you guys want to do. But I think two people can come together. You can exchange the verbals as you would in front of a priest or a pastor at a church. Make the promise. And then make the covenant with God. You promise with each other. And then you promise with God. That is what marriage was for a very long time, up until we decided it needed to have government involvement. I don't know why. I don't know why it needed to have government involvement. But at some point, they decided it did. And again, the why is actually control. And we know that because why is marriage looking the way it is today too? Well, it's because of control. It's because of finances and control. But primarily control. So that is my opinion. That is the end all be all for me. I don't think you need it. I don't think you need it. So where does sex come in then? I have super conservative views about sex, actually. I don't think you should sleep with anybody until you become at, at least covenantally married. I do believe that. Have I adhered to that my whole life? No. Do I feel shame for that? For sure. For sure. Do I regret it with everybody but Kat? For sure. 100%.